to talk about the teams that we are going to see on our screens. Bang. Fire, man. Fire. That's all I'm spitting today. And GZ, yeah. they're here to extinguish all the excitement that uh, maybe the Fury fans have, Max. Look, honestly, I think that's their plan today. I spoke to members from both sides today, and Benvy was my correspondent from Ground Zero, and his only message to me was, I'll see you in the post-game winner's interview. So he's clearly very confident about their chances heading into this match, and I think as a spectator, you kind of have to be as well, right? Up until yesterday, Ground Zero were in possession of first place. Yes, they've fallen down to both the likes of Antic and one game to Bliss, but when it comes to every other team, it feels like they are a step ahead. Sometimes they do have rough team fights where they aren't positioned well, where they don't mark flankers correctly. But for the majority of the time, it really seems like they just mechanically outplay their opponents in these skirmishes, and that leads to victory. Mechanics maxing, always a great way to do it if you can. And look, why not if you can? That's exactly what we're seeing here, managing to dominate Eye on the other day. And if they play like they did the other day, then I'm a little bit worried about Fury today, Skimmy. Well, I would be too, because I feel like you, you sort of look in isolation and think, I feel, you know, player for player, uh, Grand Zuri should be the heavy favourites for this one. But ultimately, I feel like Fury certainly have uh, a few tricks up their sleeve to try and upset the Apple Cup. But there's no denying the strength that Grand Zuri have, right? They've certainly dropped a few games, and you've questioned their their strength in those moments, but they're a team that certainly had the experience behind them, and I'm, uh, you know, confident that they'll scale their way into this one. Much the same as you'd say for Fury. I feel like Finder has been a fantastic addition into the roster. Uh, yeah. Had a very strong debut with uh, that Ash performance in particular, I remember, with the ultimates always on point, be it cross map or even just uh, point blank as well. I think Chirp's always been his very exciting mid lane prospect. Uh, certainly very hungry to do a lot of damage, but it certainly can be at the cost of um, dying in the process, right? So that's one of the big points that I noted um, about this team is that they uh, are incredibly keen to make those trades happen and will definitely, you know, pile drive bodies towards, a, towards an objective, but um, they have the most deaths in the league right now, so certainly some chaotic gameplay is to be expected of this one. But uh, I'm excited to see what matchup would look the most favorable for them. Uh, in particular, I think the top lane should be the most exciting given their sort of aggressive tendencies. Um, but I'd like to see how Chirp could handle himself into Kisse, given that Kisse still is, you know, one of those premier mid laners um, that is, even when behind, still relevant. Yeah, it's just one of those times where Fury. If they excel, if they go above and beyond from our expectations, they definitely can make this a competitive matchup today. And last time we saw them up against the likes of Antic, they did, you know, kind of impress us for the most part. There was an early couple of games where they just got off to a solid lead, but unfortunately, when you're going up the likes of Antic, they just have all that experience and they know how to play even if they do get on the back foot early, Max. Yeah, they're a very proactive team. Look, to me, the thing that's key for Fury heading into today is the bot lane. I think that when Hooper and Findo fall behind, they look horrible. And to be honest, it seems like they almost completely capitulate the second that their tower starts getting hit and they get dove on repeat. I think that this has become a really big issue and they need to start bringing members down to protect them on the early dives. I think that this is something we've seen time and time again, teams going against Fury will look to target. They'll send members early, they'll stack waves in a favorable matchup and then dive them on repeat. And to this day, we haven't seen Fury really have a fantastic response to that. So I'm hoping that after these couple weeks, after learning, they've they've shored up these weaknesses and will come in with a plan to defend bot lane. I hope they have a plan. I, I really hope they have a plan because at the same time, you know, things are going to get a little bit, little bit awkward. Um, but let's have a quick talk about the top laners because these individuals are pretty good top laners, aren't they? Tomasino impressing us the other day, and we're looking at the head-to-head -head with him and Tian. And Tian, you know his name because he's been around the bloke, uh, been around the bush before, hasn't he, Skimmy? But he certainly has. He's been playing for such a long time. We already discussed his ability to have gone overseas, played for CLG, then come on back and, you know, continue to be at the height of his game. I think the one thing really missing from Tien is the fact that he's never been able to claim that title. He's uh, always been um, the bridesmaid, not the bride, right? He's always second, third, always been hunting for that finals performance. And it's been uh, a long time coming. I feel like, you know, this is one of those rosters that certainly has that potential. I'm sure he believes that deep down as well. I'm thinking this is that fifth attempt, perhaps, of you know, can we make this one happen? But Tomasino, certainly since his debut last year, has uh, been a keen prospect to keep your eye on. And I think you're looking at these two and say, okay, what sort of champion should we expect? And whilst there certainly has been a fair bit of tank gameplay from them both, primarily from Tien, it's been a lot of Zack and Poppy, Cassante being the sort of the, the shared champion between the two of them. Um, I would like to see a little bit of spice in this one to try and get that edge. Now, I know a lot of this is going to come down to the coaching direction, whether or not they say you are allowed to be unleashed and play like a top vein or a top Lily or something crazy and wild. But um, I would like to see them showcase their skills and, and not sort of be so... Um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you know, brought into this idea that, you know, you play top, you play a tank, you go for the engage, there's your job, mate. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting fireworks in top lane, uh, but I'm not sure what sort of champion variation we'll get. Well, look, maybe we can get some kind of insight from Big Shirney Fire. Again, had a quick chat with him the other week, but look, mate, welcome back to the show. How are you feeling about today's matchup? Thank you. Um, I'm feeling good, man. I, I think we need to get this. I'm, I'm feeling like I want to humble these guys, you know? These guys are a little bit annoying to play with in solo queue, so I think we need to humble these guys. Okay, okay. Some fighting words nice and early. I'm loving that, Skimmy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Shen, you come into this one and uh, we're sort of doing a bit of a segment on jungle comparisons. I I'm sure, like, you know, you look at uh, your opposition today in Nox and you're thinking, okay, this guy's been uh, very much a, a keen advocate for full clearing and, and sort of playing his own style. Obviously, we know that you're very keen for those classic level three, level four dives into the bot lane to get your team ahead. Is that a conscious decision for today that you're expecting him to go for a bit more of a full clear style and you can exploit that by targeting those weak lanes? Oh, uh, no, man. I, when I see him, I expect him to be donking the NBA. I'm going to be honest. I, I, <laughs> I don't, honestly as well, I, he always invades. I don't know where that's coming from. Like, maybe I'm not starting well enough, but yeah, he's, uh, no, he's a very aggressive player. I like it. Yeah, not concerned. Easy as. <laughs> we'll definitely take those. Max made any questions? I want to go back to what you said. You said some plays are annoying. Can, can we get some <laughs> name and shame on broadcast? Oh, it's the soul laners. Like, uh, whenever Elena asks for resources when losing lane, it's probably the most, probably my pet peeve as a jungler, to be honest. Especially when they think they deserve it, you know? 100%. I, I definitely feel that. You know, the amount of times when I was full clear jungling, I'm like, yo, I need to go six, and someone steal my Raptor camp. I'm like, hey! That's too far. That's too far, all right? And then you run it down mid and throw the game, huh? Is that what we're doing? Is that what you do? Emotional damage. Yeah, definitely. Okay. You probably shouldn't do that. You might get banned by Riot, but look, it's just, it's just me. It's just me. <laughs> nah, uh, but look, I'm anyway, on it. this note... This... <laughs> Sharon, mate, look, we'll let you go. Enjoy the game. Uh, hopefully, you can humble Fury. Let's see if it happens. Thanks, guys. That was Schoenfire. And yeah, spicy interview. Spicier than I thought we were going to get, for sure. Max, you yeah. cheeky bugger, prodding hey, for it. Hey, if, if, he, he, if he brought it up, I'm gonna, I'm just going to press that a little bit more, you know? He was the one who brought that to the table. Poking True. buttons. Mm. Pushing all the right buttons. So it was the solo laners. So he's going to have a vengeance laners. in his yeah. pathing today. <laughs> when you were, you know, jungling for that little bit of time, did anyone ever try to steal your camps, Max? I don't want to get, there's, there'll be too many names. I don't think I'll be allowed back on broadcast if I go on my kind of, <laughs> down my list of players who annoyed me in solo queue. Okay, what about, what about you, Skimmy? What about an A-Rams? Anyone steal any camps in A-Rams? Well, yeah. Um, they sometimes steal my snowball and I get really, really upset about that. Oof. Yeah, because the Pora doesn't get fed, they don't explode, they don't get the fire. Piss poor behavior, terrible. mate. Absolutely terrible. Now, how are, we, how are we expecting it to, to go? Do we think it's going to be a bit of a fiery matchup? He was saying um, he was expecting Nox to go for those real early invades. Do you think we're going to actually see that? Depends on prior in lanes, to be honest. I think invading is something it's very hard to do organically 1v1 if the map's just in a complete deadlock. That's almost never the case in a competitive game. So I think it will be based on, you know, if they have something like a Varus Karma in the bot lane, if they have like a really, you know, pushing bot lane that enables them to move and then invade, that's how I can see that happening. I think they yeah. will. I think based on what we've seen from Ox recently, it's been a lot of Trundle. Trundle is very keen to go for those 1v1s. So based on your point, right, and, and based on what we've seen from it, it has been Callista, Varus, and Caitlyn in the last three. Those are champions that want to push. The Trundle, and, um, you know, uh, in tandem with that is going to be very much like, sweet, there's a gank, there's an angle. Uh, especially once level six is online, a subjugate, it's the 1v1 of your dreams. So I'm quite keen to see it, but I'm curious to see what Granzo would respond with, right? Whether or not Shern goes for the, the, um, the brand, it just says, well, I'm just going to out DPS your team. Or if he says, look, I'll have to play like the Maokai and Poppy and try and protect and respond that way. Ren meta's been interesting, hasn't it? There's just been a, a lot going on in the jungle. You know, you, you wouldn't expect... Look, how many, how many years ago do you think you would have thought, okay, there's no way Brand can be a jungler? It was just last year he got that jungle buff, right? He's only been played seriously in the jungle for like a couple months from memory, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think Agarin was the one who kind of popularized it over in Europe. Yeah. And then everyone started playing it in competitive. But like it just shifts the jungle meta so much because like those picks you mentioned, Maokai, Poppy, 
Brand is the perfect champion into those because he just absolutely races them in terms of clear speed and then rocks up and he just gets the free hit of melee for his passive. So I think it's a really interesting pick and a really cool addition to the jungle pool. Not I sure feel like junglers are the same as support Hey, Mac. hey, hey, hey. Okay, we you, have a you guest, Skimmy. Oh. You can't keep filling air, okay? Because Nox is here and he oh, hey, demands Nox. your bloody respect, Skimmo. <laughs> hey, Nox, how you doing? Hey. I'm good, I'm good. Beautiful, beautiful. How are you feeling about this matchup in the jungle today? Because we just spoke to Shern and he's worried you're going to be running at him a little bit. Uh, I think it should be fun. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we'll just bring it up before you for this big affinity uh, affinity for Trundle recently. Has that been a conscious decision based on the matchups you've been going into? Or was it just a, a champion you feel works really well for you right now? Uh, I don't know. It's, Trundle is just good into like the tanks and um i don't know and it's like really good like skirmishing so that's why we liked mm -hmm. it but i think it's kind of like bad to be honest mm. like late game i'm expecting some yeah yeah well i'm expecting you to go crazy with some invades with the with the trend and, and try and punish so i'm excited for that <laughs> yeah we'll see if that yeah. happens max mate any questions first of all uh thank you for the games earlier today well done Good wins. Um, second of all, nah, we just had Shern come on and say that your solo laners are incredibly annoying to play with in solo queue because they always demand resources. How translatable is that to competitive? And do you find yourself getting dragged a lot by these loud voices? Um, nah, it's <laughs> should be. <laughs> nah, that 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 the comms like, oh, uh, they're not really that demanding, but sometimes. They like, cool. um, okay. Okay. So it's a solo queue thing. Yeah, it's, um, it's probably a solo queue thing. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see if uh, there's any camp stolen from you today, Nox, and we'll have you back in case there are. But look, we'll let you go. Get ready for the game and enjoy it. We might talk to you after. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. And look, the game not too far away now. So that means I want. You guys to tell me where you think this game's going, huh? Where's, where we where do we think it's sneak into do we think we're gonna get everyone starting blue again yep all right no awesome. surprises Woo. yesterday was great yesterday was a good surprise bliss going for the full change up starting on that red side but now everyone's back to blue back to steady sailing skimmy yeah i feel like yesterday was definitely a uh a, i don't want to say a one-off but definitely a, a a taste of what sort of the the playoffs could look like where teams show a little bit more respect for one another and say it's not about getting the first pick anymore it's much more about the counter pick later on I think certainly during the regular season, though, it's all about guaranteeing that really strong champion, that Varus, that Ash, that Callista, for the most part, right? Certainly we saw the outliers yesterday where it's like a first pick Asante, but I think, I, I imagine it should be business as usual today, where we should just be locking in the AD carries and then building a full comp based off that. Okay, well, we'll see if that comp comes through and we'll see if you guys get your bloody prediction right again. You guys yesterday were on fire. I was on fire. Nat's loving my predictions probably, and she'll come back to, you know, being in the lead and be like, ah, easy as you guys <laughs> have a lot to answer for. And you guys have a lot to answer for. Get those Twitch points in. Uh, let us know how you think this one's going to go so we can get your prediction correct or wrong. Let's see. Let's see. And let's have a look at what our predictions are as well. Skimmy Max, what are you going with? Same as me. Well, I'm going the GZ Whee! route. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I think uh, no yep. real surprises there. I think I'll, I'd be surprised if Twitch chat doesn't go for GZ as well. Of course, I, I have to say GZ just looking like the heavy favourites with the performance we've seen from them in the past and this split so far, Skimmy. Yeah, I think I'm going 70-30 in favour of GZ. I think even in their games where they've looked a little bit shaky, they've still managed to get across the line and that's all that really matters at the end of the day, right? You just need those three points. The 2-0 is the 2-0 at the end of the day. Um, I certainly do expect a fair bit of fight from Fury, but I just don't know if that's enough to outmatch what Grand Zero have. Okay, what about you, Max? Give me your justification. Well, every time I predict Grand Zero 1-1, one, one, Benvy sends me a hate message on Discord saying, why did you predict 1-1 one, one? when you know we're going to 2-0? So that plays into it. <laughs> also, the fact that I do think that they're just better around the board, and I think that bot lane's going to be a really big worry point. Like, I already kind of mentioned that before of how big I think the bot lane struggles have been for Fury, and I think that Benvy and Lemus are in a really good position to kind of exacerbate that weakness. I did I did get a DM from Why Not yesterday after going for that 2-0 for Bliss. He was like, yes, Mac, believe up. But look, <laughs> you're getting the peer pressure before the game. That's crazy. Mm. That's crazy. Benvy, get off the keyboard. Get your, head, get your head in the game. Focus up. 
and then you might make those predictions correct for us, all right? We all want it, at least predictions-wise. But let's talk about draft. You know, we were talking about the jungle for a fair while there. What are we expecting in the bot lane? Because Lemus and Benvy, as you mentioned, they've been having a pretty good time in the bot lane. And Fury, we just haven't seen as much from this team overall. So what do you think we're going to see for the bot lane matchup? Uh, well, the, the, one thing, the one thing that caught me off guard Again. is um, Fury against Kanga. They did play a center uh, Seraphine in the bot lane, which is a little bit spicy. So that was quite cool. On the flip side, we did see Benvy um, proc a Huawei Varus uh, matchup into the Renata. So I think that's quite exciting too. We did see a uh, Blitzcrank also in that same series up against Ion. So I certainly think there's a bit of ability for the likes of uh, both Fino and Benvy to try and influence things, be it a okay. pick or just a little bit spicy. It's keen. I'm cool. I'm keen as well. And guess what? Chips yeah. legs bloody ready. So let's get into the first game of the day. Less theory and uh, more actuality, I suppose. And let's see exactly what, in fact, gets locked in as the Belvef tax once again has to be paid. Nox. I don't think he's ever going to be allowed to play that champion. No, that has been banned against him every single game so far of the LCO, and for good reason, right? This band is an absolute menace. In solo queue, he can basically 1v9 games on this champion. That really is going to be a focus here for Fury, is what is Nox playing? Because he, has, he actually has shown quite a fair bit of diversity. We talked about the Trundle earlier on as an answer into picks like the Jin Zhao and Maokai which is able to actually invade, able to get very active early. And that's something that Fury, I think, want to do from the start. But speaking about getting active early, Kalista's locked in for ground zero. So he is, fantastic champion, really, really aggressive and certainly want to try and stomp that lane. But I tell you what, I'm really happy about seeing him, Max, the fact that they finally, finally banned away this Udia because it's been giving Tien a fair bit of, uh, fair bit of trouble. And that's the thing, I think Tien is a player who struggles a lot more than he should against the easier opponents of all things. He's one of these players, and we've always talked about Tien as being a confident guy, but sometimes he just gets bored in lanes when he's not getting kills, right? And that can be to his detriment because he ends up going down in solo kills and matchups where you know on paper he's the better player. So I think removing this Udia, removing perhaps a, a chance for the enemy top laner to just kind of stonewall the lane, allows him to have that skill expression and allows him to hopefully get the better of Tomasino in this 1v1. Well, whilst that was all going on there, Max, I tell you what, I've been absolutely shell-shocked by this response here to go for the way as well as the Renata. So they've actually picked yeah. the champion that counts as a champion, but then said, you know what, this is a champion designed for the mid lane. So let's play it right there. They've seen the Azir, they feel confident in this matchup. I'm keen to see what happens. Yeah, the Kalista Renata, a huge pairing to secure in that bot lane, just gives your Kalista so much freedom. The extra couple seconds that you get from the bailout to be able to use your Ren, stack a couple more spears and then use that ability is can often be quite fight changing a lot of the time, right? Especially against the Tarm Kentry, you're going to be able to hit a lot in the laning phase. So a nice little adaptation as well, kind of forcing their hand of Fury to go towards the Tarm Kench, the more traditional option, I guess, which is just trying to really survive through the laning phase and then act to empower that center later in the game. We certainly saw what an Azir and a Senna can do together uh, last night, right? When the game went late enough, the Azir was hitting them from a million miles away across the wall, as well as the Senna too, uh, basically doing the most damage in team fights, uh, even as the support. So certainly a champion, if the game does go that long, um, that will definitely punish Ground Zero if they're unable to wrap things up nice and quickly. Into that second half then of the band phase, we'll see what else gets removed from the table. It's the Maokai now denied. What is prevent Maokai, or rather, I should say, uh, Shernfai having any kind of ease of access to try and target either, what, bot or mid? The Twisted Fate ban is really interesting to me, Skimmy, and that kind of says that, you know, perhaps TN is playing this in top lane in scrims, right? We've seen it in the LEC, the AD variant of TFB played towards that top side into things like the Gwen. Just a champion that can kite it out, often secure a lane in lead just because of the inherent range advantage. And it's really nice to see some respect shown from Fury to take that option away from Ground Zero. It certainly is. I feel like top lane is always keen to try and bring a mage into the top lane, right? We had the Rise meta for such a long time. And it may feel like Twisted Fate is the next one ready to there we go. It. As you say, you hit the nail on the head, right? The Gwen being considered, not just locked in yet, but it is Thomas Cena looking to try and get some AP on their team to uh, not put all the onus on to the Azir. I, w I do want to just flag as well the fact that Nox is a very prolific Gwen player and not to leak our DMs, but I'm going to leak our DMs. He did <laughs> tell me about how much he likes Gwen in the jungle. So there always is the potential that this is a flex, right? If Tomasino's matchup ends up being really bad, if it's a Jax or something that we know Tien likes to pilot, you always have the option to move that down towards the jungle and then secure a counter pick for yourselves. But it looks like oh. the Lily is going to be locked in for the side of Ground Zero Gaming here. Now, Skimmy, we know Tien's played this in the top lane before, but it could also go into the hands of Shurnfire. 
It certainly could. And uh, with the Cassante, I think we have to sigh and say it might not be happening. I've not seen a Cassante in the jungle. Um, but certainly would have been excited to see Lilia in the top lane. Would be a bit of a blast to the past. The Jarvan comes on out. Interesting. So all these potential flexes that could have been um, from those teams maybe all coming unstuck. We'll see what it all lands on in the end. But ultimately, I feel like both teams got what they really wanted. I feel like Fear have got their ability to try and be aggressive. They got the opportunity to be um, you know, scaling into this game. But for Grand Zero, they've got the pick potential. They've got the lading potential. And I think ultimately they've got the Lilia that could try and 1v9 as the solo, uh, solo AP. Yeah, Fury has a very nice scaling comp, but Ground Zero have a lot of ways to kind of prevent that scaling from coming online, right? This Jarvan fifth pick's a bit confusing to me because it doesn't really have any blatant good matchups besides this Hui, right? Lilia is just going to be able to outpace you, and a Callista can obviously just jump out of your Cataclysm. So it's going to be on Nox to try to take advantage of the game before this Lilia comes online, because once we see a Lilia get to one, two items, she will just be prancing around this fight, and the jungler is going to be simply outpaced. So Fury do need to make sure that they're pre kind of preserving in this early game to make sure they can get to the point where this center comes online, this Azir comes online, and all on top of all of that, you have a Gwen as well. We certainly do have a Gwen as well, and uh, it actually took me down memory lane as to when was the last time we actually saw Gwen in the jungle? All the way back in 2022, split one by Arthur, um, which is a uh, major, major blast of the past. Um, but uh, ultimately, not here today, but certainly a flex and, and maybe one that we might even get to see once the playoffs come around. Uh, and no doubt Fury, currently set in fifth position, will be hoping that is their reality. Not too many games left to play now. Every point matters, and as you already rose at the start of the show here, Max, it was a case of if Grand Zero could 2-0, their playoffs journey is complete. They're locked in, top six is secured, but if they draw, they do not. And I'm sure they do not want to have to really rely on results going their way, as well as trying to control their own fate from um, their final match. Yeah, absolutely not. Having that extra reassurance as well kind of gives you the freedom to test some things out in those last weeks, right? Whether it be some new champions, some new playstyle, it really does enable you a bit more freedom and a bit more ease, right? You're not, you're not stressing about having to show potentially things that you'd prepared for playoffs because you're worried about not getting their fury. On the other hand, you know, they are in a decent position, right? With those two wins that they managed to secure for themselves. They are sitting on six points, but by no means is this a locked thing. By no means are they absolutely secure. So to that end, they got to make sure that this game they're playing with this um, win con in mind, right? They need to make sure that they're playing every single fight in a measured way because a second slip up against Ground Zero and they'll take over the game. They study well and uh, the schedule doesn't really get much easier after this matchup tonight into Ground Zero, right? Because they've still got Dire Wolves left to play, the postponed matchup from the other week, as well as uh, Team Bliss to close it out here in week six. So uh, in terms of what's still left, look, there's a lot of pressure and um, we, we can talk about experimentation. We can certainly talk about champions that may be used in a one-off uh, event and maybe you have to reveal some tech and ultimately they may have to just showcase everything to guarantee that that playoff spot is locked on in but here are the comps that we have tonight and i tell you what it is the way coming back into action is played by grand zero again but not in the support role tonight because they're going to debut it in the mid lane and we'll get to see it at full effect we absolutely will skimmy kise on this way here has shown to be a menace in solo queue, just mechanically outplaying his opponents. He's often up CS, often up pressuring the enemy under their turret, and hopefully this is something he can replicate here against Chirp, because we have known that whilst Chirp is capable of pumping out those damage numbers, he is also very susceptible to falling down at the slightest sign of support or jungle interference. So I imagine that Ground Zero, that's going to be something that's on their minds as they head into this early game. So we have to keep that one in mind as they are going to go for a little bit of aggression here. Starting off by Lemus. Couple of little attacks into the support, but also on the other side, it's two different skirmishes with Grand Zero on both occasions leading at the charge. Really setting the tone for this game that we will be the ones in control and you will always be uh, reacting to our next move. Yeah, and just the nature of those comps almost dictates that as well, right? Fury's comp inherently kind of wants to play more reserved style until they have those items come online, whereas Ground Zero, you can see already from this bot lane posture level one, wants to take things on the front foot, want to be aggressive, and already some of the spells from Fury's bot lane indicate that they kind of have keyed into their rolling to survive. They want to have that cleanse, they want to have that exhaust, both sums defensively available to get themselves out of any predicament. But you but can see here, Limus and Benvy. Yeah, I mean... Whilst you were talking, I was just in shell shock. The fact that they've been so patiently waiting. 
Gonna zone them off from the wave at level one here. Trying to deny XP, that's the key factor. Will Hooper actually be able to get up and get it? I'm not sure, we'll be able to see soon enough. But crucially, it looks like he might have missed one melee minion. So that's all you really need to do as a Callista Renata. You just kind of walk up and just because of how strong your champions are at level one, the inherent threat is too much. The bat lane of Fury needs to back off. As Benvy's looking, he only has the loyalty program though. It's really once that handshake starts to come out that the kill threat is on. It certainly is, and with level two, you'd now expect that to be online and for them to continue to build up that massive wave. Uh, as we turn our attention towards mid lane, and it's Kisse that's going to receive a little bit of attention here from Nox. He's just going to path down to the bot side and towards Schoenfire, who's currently taking his red buff. And Nox is going to get told, well, it was a nice attempt, but now I know exactly where you are and what you got left to clear. And there we go, Skimmy. What a perfect way to demonstrate our ganking burst, full clearing ramp that we went on before, right? This is the con of going for a play like that, is that you are now down CS, down camps. Shurnfire's on 16, and because of the priority that Ground Zero have, he's going to feel free to walk into Fury's jungle here. He also has a smite, Skimmy. He certainly does. He's going to be careful right now, as it looks like the Gromp has actually held a suspension. Is it going to reset? It's just out of range, and it gets picked up by Shurnfire. And I tell you what, that is that prime example. If you make the opportunity happen and it doesn't work out, you just fall so much further behind. And now the bot lane gets to profit even further based on how aggressive they've been from the very get-go. And a fantastic stat has been that Grand Zero have found themselves the first turret 80% of the time. They're just that aggressive that it works that the Shurnfire continues to bully Nox away to where camps do not even exist. Yeah, it's a tragedy because no one can actually come to save this Jarvan, right? We see mid lane. Kisei has a sizable health advantage and bot lane's pinned underneath their turret. So Shurnfire capitalizes very well on Nox's earlier mistake and will eat the Gromp, the Blue, and the two small wolves from Nox. Got a scuttle to disengage away to as well. And that's really all Nox has to look forward to in the top half of this map, right? To pick that one up. Whether or not he feels confident enough to go for that invade that Shurnfire was a little bit cautious of, that is the next question because the blue buff is still up and available on the side of Ground Zero. But he's caught Good in this rough situation of, I'm level three, I need to make something happen. I see that camp is there, but then Tomasino absolutely brings it to Tien and breaks up the tempo with first blood. We knew it would be spicy, but I didn't expect a solo kill at four minutes and 20 seconds into this game here. It looks like Tien just got a little bit overconfident, wanting to catch those minions and didn't really want to use the TP back to lane. But ends up just going down to Tomasino in a straight 1v1. Unbelievable. A champion like Gwent certainly loves to get a little bit of early gold injected into their back pocket to really give them that major boost straight back to base, haunting guys online. And I don't think he's going to show any signs of slowing down with these aggressive trades. Yeah, absolutely not. Gwen versus Kasante is a matchup where, you know, Gwen can have her way with the lane because she just sits with four stacks of her Q in the middle of a lane. And anytime Kasante wants to walk up for a Q, he will be tanking that to the face. But now, Tomasino in quite a nice position. However, Shurnfire is still ahead. That's all we have to remember. You can see tempo advantage. He has a blasting one. Is is up about three camps right now. So feels pretty comfortable heading towards these Void Grubs, taking them while Jarvan's forced to clear his Krogs. Yeah, certainly in a really strong position to take over this game, right? We, we talk about an AP variant. Obviously, it's going to be the double AP from both jungle and mid. If either one get ahead, then it becomes a bit of a nightmare in terms of what do we actually itemize towards, because you can see that still Lemus and Benvi are absolutely crushing in the bot lane. As we say that though, both junglers are still going to be in the top half of this map with Nox looking to see where Shurnfire was going, just clearing out vision for the meantime, just offering a little bit of extra protection to Tien as he is going to push in this wave. Yeah, Shurnfire will be spotted. That's something the Fury have done quite well this game, is kind of track the way that Shurnfire is pathing. You saw that earlier, Scuttlecrab spotted him on the Void Grub, so they definitely knew he was doing that. And as well, they will have an indication as to where he's heading now. Full clearing down towards this bot side of the map. So Jarvan, whilst he will be able to clear, you can notice there's an XP gap that will be equalized after this Gromp. But it means that Shurnfire will get closer to that level 6. He'll tick that first. And that can be all important if we're talking about an early fight. Certainly can be all important. You certainly need those breakpoints to come online as quickly as you can. Speaking of, whilst you have a little bit of downtime, it's the uh, the tonics available, the triple tonics from the Inspiration Tree for both Tien and Kisley there. It looks uh, a little bit of extra damage to help with your CS and a bit of gold afterwards. Certainly a nice way to try and snowball things if you need to try and, uh, you know, really fine-tune your push timings. 
to sync up with the rest of your team for perhaps an objective or a skirmish that may break on out. And I'll return to that previous point about the ability for Grand Zero to have their best chances of taking that first tower. 80% over all these games played is pretty phenomenal to say the least. And to take down two plates already uh, really does put you in good stead. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be heading towards that stat this game with the way that this Callista Renata are able to play. Also noting here while Ground Zero take this dragon that it's a farming center. So not the typical, you know, Tom Kench support that we're used to seeing. We kind of have been seeing a blend internationally of center being played both AD carry and support. But you do have to imagine there's probably some thinking that the Callista, if she's able to free hit Tom Kench while she, while he rather farms the camps, is getting aggressive, forces the flash out. A nice little abyssal dive, wasn't it? Certainly enough pressure to make sure that, look, you're getting aggressive in this lane, you're looking to try and shove us away. But we're not going to let it go unchecked for too much longer. Now they do have a bit of a oh. advantage. Top lane, however, out goes the all-out mode. It does not matter. Snip, snip, make it happen again. Two solo kills for Tomasino. Yeah, that's all it is, Tien. There, a little bit of frustration, but he seems to be just being outplayed here in this 1v1, right? He tried to drag him back under the turret, but the Gwen damage was too much with that Q still available. And I talked about it before, TN seems to just fall down to players who he really shouldn't be falling down to. And Tomasino seems like the real deal here in game one. It certainly is, I'm so glad we highlighted it as the head-to-head -head matchup to keep your eyes on right now, because it is certainly delivering on at that front. Fantastic awareness there from Schoenfire to say, my mid laner is low. I'd expect a Java to be in the area and certainly caught him out in just a heartbeat like that. Well, level six is online from the majority of the players now. Hot lane's certainly on that same wavelength as well. And begs the question then, when we're gonna see the next level of aggression, because right now I'm sure Tomasino is screaming to his team, I am so strong, let's make something happen. Yeah, well that's the thing, right? With the complex scales as well, having any lead in the early game is a very welcome sight. So for Tomasino to be this ahead, I can guarantee you he's saying to the rest of his team, Let's not fight unless I'm involved, right? And the next thing that he's going to really be able to get involved in is the next Grub Spawn. That's really when he's going to be able to hopefully use this gold lead to further help Fury with their quest to win this game, right? You can see the gold already in favor of Fury, despite the lead that the bot lane of Ground Zero have been able to gather. So quite a comfortable position for them to be sitting in this early into the game. Well, as you said, you know, the overall gold is still at 14,000, but you can see lane by lane it is Grand Zero ahead. So really it is Tomasino holding his entire team on his shoulders and saying, we can start ahead. We don't have to fall behind by two to 5,000 gold and, you know, bail out with the, oh yeah, we scaled, don't worry. Uh, because we are certainly on even footing right now and the pressure is on Ground Zero to continue to be aggressive in the early game to make sure that they can build that snowball that they're so, uh, so keen to try and find. Well, I mean, Grand Zero right now, you can see three Void Grubs already picked up. Lily is so fantastic at speedrunning this clear. May look to try and get five, but Tomasino and Nox are hot on their money. Look to try and find what they can get done. Four picked up. In they go, but Nox gets handshook away. Out goes the Cataclysm. There is the unending despair. He's revealed. He's put to sleep, and then he gets put in the graveyard. There is Benvy with the bailout, but it does not proc because Tomasino fights his third kill. He is still alive, but then finally Kisse devastatingly blast him down and they can return back to where it all started at the Void Grum Cap. There goes the early game fight for Ground Zero. You can see that Tomasino wants to use his lead. He's running down, but simply the members of Ground Zero are there first and this Renata buys so much time and forces Tomasino to commit so deep. He's all of your damage at this stage in the fight, right? If he's not able to hit multiple members with that Q, with that ultimate, you are not going to be winning the fight. And unfortunately for Fury, all that lead in the top side doesn't amount to much here. Completely unstuck now, absolutely. 2,000 gold on the hold as a result of that one. And Grand Zero have not only picked up all six of the Void Grubs, they've got themselves the first dragon as well. And it's back to business for them. For all that early aggression, and has got the ability to absolutely crush through these towers. And it's been really rough for Hooper and Finum to spot lane from what was a very clever level one. But let's run it back with this initial fight because it's great heads up awareness to say we are strong. We can't let this go unchecked. Yeah, they do want to fight here, right? It's the right idea, but unfortunately, Nox is just way too far. You can see Findo is barely on the screen right now compared to Benby, who has been here from the minute the fight breaks out. So by the time Thomasino is able to actually get his damage off, all his teammates are dead, and Findo's just there to watch them go down. He certainly is. As we return back to the live action, and a fantastic fear from Kisser there. His trip certainly was hot on his money to try and get that kill in the mid lane with Nox pursuing him, not too far behind. That is the punishment, right, of the job. And once again, he's looking, he's finding, but he's unable to actually you know, convert it into anything meaningful. 
Yeah, that was a really nice fear there from Kisei. If that doesn't land, Chirp just scoops him up because he has no flash, and that's a sure kill going into the pocket of Fury. So, nice little mechanical play there. But as this jungle gap is just getting larger and larger, the game becomes so much harder, right? You can see this Shen, this Lilia rather, already has Leandris completed. He's so out far ahead of Nox on this Jarvan. And here in Libus, Ben, we might have found Findo. Maybe. The fixed skins would have been popped in the end. It was enough. Picture perfect on their attempt to get that kill in the bot lane. Shurnfire not far behind. Doesn't pick up an assist, unfortunately, but he's in the right place at the right time because now plates, tower, and a dragon, they're living in Wonderland. It's absolutely all you could dream for here is ground zero, right? Things have gone exactly according to plan. Your bot lane is winning this 2v2 just by nature of having that stronger early game. And then your jungler is so far ahead of the enemy jungler that even a 3v3 is not something you'd be looking at in mid lane. Kisei, look how far back Chirp is having to play just because of all the damage and the threat that Kisei has against this Azir. This range is unethical and I don't blame Nox actually just saying, you know what, the no. only lane that's working for us right now is top lane. Let's try and put Tien down for the third time in a row. That goes to the invulnerable circle. There is that flag and drag the snip slip from a far away and the dawning shadow all the way from bot lane. And they really are bullying this Cassante. Yeah, this poor Cassante. Tien is not having a good time up in this top lane, but Kiste is going to get shoveled in the mid lane. He's going to get scooped on back. The damage comes out. It's not enough. And the tower shot certainly not ramped up to take him down in the process too. I mean, really, Chirp was hunting and hoping, but everything was expended to get that kill top. Yeah, absolutely. All the time that Fury puts up towards that top lane, the ultimate as well coming through. It does secure the kill and it's a very important one, but it doesn't do anything to ease the pressure on the bot side of the map, which is really where it's been starting to build up. You can see this tower, one and a half plates remaining, but Ground Zero can just freely walk in on repeat, right? Their mid laner is never going to be able to move. Perhaps the only thing they can look for is a Tomasino teleport, but there are no real good TP wards. Besides that one next to Benvy right now. Nothing too ideal in that regard, and huh. so they don't want to have to be playing for a TP on the tower and waiting for that passive push in the lane to sneak your way in. A bit of a break point though, coming across for a few of these key members. We were just talking about the strength that Grand Zero have. Well, some strength found in the bot lane is the Yomus is there for Hooper, but will he get a chance to even utilize it as Fino grabs him up nicely for you? Fantastic hostile takeover, making sure you're not going anywhere with that Devour. No Abyss will dive out to safety this time. Hooper's leaving for the meantime. He's popped a cleanse, but his support is dead. He's going to get completely zoned from this wave. No XP, no minions, no gold. Finder lives for a while, but ultimately him going down is going to be the start of the spiral for Ground Zero. They're just taking everything on the map towards this bot side. Like you said, it's going to be the tower. It's going to be the cleanser as well coming out of this center. So not safe anymore, despite you know, how, how much you'd like to be with that time, Kench. And now the bot lane is going to be freed. And that's really the important thing, right? It's Lemis and Benvi are going to be moving up towards this Rift Herald here. But Fury do have the tempo advantage. They're looking to kill it now and they're bringing all five members to do it. They certainly are. Everybody is uh, joining into this one to make sure that they guarantee at least one objective goes their way. They've managed to continue to hold this uh, snowball lead that Grand have required at the, uh, the modest 2k margin. And that Herald will certainly work wonders to help get them out of the hole they found themselves in this early on. You take a quick uh, you know, stock check off the scoreboard, you say, well, that's a 2-0 Callista. That's a way that's been an absolute nuisance for this Azir. Uh, and the Lilia is absolutely farming up a storm right now. So we need to find a way to either, you know, get Tomasito involved or, or find that second item spike before this game completely gets, um, yeah, brutalized. Yeah, Brutalized is the turn that I would be using right now as well. You can see the Ground Zero shifting their attention up towards this top lane. You can see with the mid lane turret having already fallen, this is the last remaining outer that they do have their eyes set on. But it looks like Reset's going to come through throughout the side of Ground Zero as they get back and buy. And already these items coming online, incredibly strong, right? Luden's companion there for Kisei. He's working his way towards the second item as well as... Lemus, who's already halfway there, so these carries who are, you know, wanting to be snowballed, they need to be snowballed, are very much fulfilling that condition right now. They certainly are. Going to be sitting very pretty, very happy about the way that this game has played out thus far, with a bounty on their heads and no objective bounty to be claimed by the opposition. It's really on themselves to continue the game at its current pace. And uh, maybe the deceiving nature of this way has caught them a little bit off guard by all the different combinations that it can possess. Now, Benvy being caught out of position for the meantime. 
Has that baited out Nox to go for the Cataclysm? It feel like an absolute waste of use there on only a Renata, but out comes the Hostile Takeover. Thomas Finner goes Berserk, hits nothing, dashes across the wall, but then gets put to sleep. Two members down, and Granzo continue to look for their fight right now. Tien hunting for an angle to try and get the all out. But Lemus chucks in Benvy for the knockup onto Chirp. Chirp scoops them right back, tries to summon a tower in the mid lane and hopes that they can stand their ground here at that mid tier one. But Tien is still hunting, he's still pursuing, and he's dragging members back. Kisley's found one, Shernfire bumps them on the head, and they get locked to the Cataclysm, which I think honestly helped Grand Zero more than their opposition. Fury are desperate for something. They try to kill Benvi, but simply this Renata just does not go down. You can see all the survivability that he brings enables Grand Zero to get into position to win a 4v5. And then once Kisei rocks up, it is completely said and done. And we see how it starts here, right? Thomasino thinks he has the initial pick onto Benvi, but just some really nice movement. And the fact that he still has Flash is really kind of scaring Fury from fully committing to this engage. And then teleports come through. It's a nice Lily ulti that forces the time Kenshold out and Chirp is so far mispositioned that getting to this turret is only the really thing that kind of buys them a little bit more time in this fight. I think it tells everything right. The fact that a support can look to try and navigate it and then flash forward aggressively to reposition the hostile take of it. We're back to the scene of the crime where the fight broke out previously and it's all Shernfire to start things off here. Ultimates are lagging behind this missing summoners, there's missing major abilities. That's not going to deter them from continuing to fight on out right now as so that third dragon is being looked at. Grand Zero would love to pick this one up nice and quickly for that very accelerated 23 minute soul point. And they've done fantastic. They've zoned away uh, Fury. Yeah, I mean, how do you walk in here, right? As soon as we come out of that replay, you can see Findo's going down. He's meant to be the guy that you want to be sending forwards, but he's at level 7 Tom Kench, incredibly squishy. And Jarvan right now, a Sundered Sky is going to do absolutely nothing against the sheer amount of damage that Ground Zero have. So now this issue of snowballing really does become an, a really potent one because it's a Baron that's spawning in a minute. You have a Kalista, you have a Lilia. Both of these champions are very good at taking this objective down incredibly quickly. So how do you face check? How do you make sure you can actually prevent that from happening? Because or else if that does happen, it might be game over. And I would argue, Max, that they have one of the best ways of defending the Baron as they go for that 50-50 sort of uh, bait attempt, right? Because you've got the Cassandra, an isolator key member, be it the jungler, for example. You've got the uh, Renata that can just make you go berserk and you can't actually interact with the Baron steel. So I feel like they've certainly got the damage and the tools to make sure they can guarantee that one right on spawn if the situations uh, line up perfectly. But in the bot lane right now, it's Thomas Cinder taking that 1v2. Dawning Shadow not going to give him the shield. But damage to a fraction, and this is a little bit BM, isn't it? I mean, Shepard <laughs> just going to burn him on down, run away, okay. and let the red buff and the Leandries do all the work. Yeah, they were definitely playing with their food there from the side of Grand Zero. But meanwhile, Nox gets interrupted. He does get interrupted. The Spire with the Spares giving him the vision, giving them damage, and giving Kisse his third kill of the game. He's got the Cosmic Drive. He's got the mobility. He's got so much damage for that uptime. He's got heaps of damage, and Chirp's about to find out about that as well as Benvi could be looking. Doesn't have the flash, though, so no real easy way to get across that wall. And now you start to see the composition of Fury falling apart when your previous kind of savior, who was so far ahead, is now falling victim to this Lilia, who can just pace around the jungle because of how fed she is, rock up to any lane with those two items and just take you down at any time. And now this gold graph, completely different to what we saw before. It's all Grand Zero at the top. And once again, it paints the picture we were saying at the start of the show, right? If you do fall behind as a ganking jungler, you do have the economy of a support player. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Nox, only a few hundred gold above that of Benvi as the Renata. It's a pretty unfortunate picture to paint, but that is the reality we have right now. And so much so that they have to summon a Herald unmanned in the mid lane from base that achieves nothing. And that's all Grand Zero needed to say, well, the Baron is asked to start now. And Fury, how do you get in? Because the vision belongs to us. The damage is there too were up by nearly 7,000. Yeah, 7,000 the gold lead. And you can see with that vision toggle, it really does become a guessing game as to when you need to come in. Luckily, they do have the Jarvan flag. So, you know, that does help a little bit in terms of being able to find out when that Baron is being taken. But they should have a very clear indication of the fact that no one's answering bot lane that this Baron is being seriously considered. As here comes a little lullaby. So he does put two uh, members to sleep for the meantime. Out goes a few more ultimates for good measure to make sure that we've got those zoning tools. Look how far pushed up Grand Zero are as Nox jumps in, but too little too late. The Baron is gone and very much right on cue as you expected there on spawn. They've picked it up. 
and the snowball continues to press forward. Ever forward is the comp of Ground Zero. You can see all the resources that they commit to ensure that Fury can't even get into the pit. They sacrifice that bot lane tier one, but you're absolutely happy with that as Lemus has found Chirp. He certainly has found Chirp, Ooh. and I think this uh, really speaks volumes now, but an Eddie Carry can just 1v1 a mage player like that. Thomas is not going to let that one go through. However, he instantly pressed the TP Ghost. The ballot won't be enough. They can't kill Thomas Fino quick enough. He's gone in for what feels like a 1v4. And Churnfire says, well, my AD carry is dead, but at least I get to profit. That was an incredibly intelligent play there from Tomasino, actually, right? He TPs in, gets the initial shutdown onto Lemus, but then realizes that he has to kill the bailout as well. So he actually saves that ultimate and saves that Q to be able to kill the clone, right? And that's really huge. That secures him the kill. So yes, you know, it's an overwhelmingly favorable play for Ground Zero. As we take a look once again at this 1v1, Chirp importantly uses his Q at the start of this, so doesn't really have any damage to contest with Lemus. And here comes Tomasino charging in. Little can Shenfire do without that ultimate to actually stop him. But you can see here, right, he saved that third tick of his ultimate, the most important one, to kill him again. That's a huge injection of gold to come onto this Gwen. It really does feel like at this point, Tomasino versus the world. You can see that, uh, what, Lemus and Chirp can both pixel perfect hit the flash to guarantee that they are not escaping that occasion. But it certainly is an uphill battle at this stage. The mid jungle are 7 and 0, Max. They are a force to be reckoned with. And what do you itemize towards? Is it AP? Is it uh, AD? Yeah, it feels like you need a bit of everything at this stage, but Magic Resist definitely something that I would be prioritizing as this Java. And it just feels so bad though, because what is he actually able to farm right? You can see now that both Chirp and Nox are just completely committing to this top side. That enables Ground Zero to get onto this inhibitor completely uncontested. And they've got away from the bot lane, bot lane as well. They're looking for two. This is crazy. Look how quickly these towers melt. These structures do not even get a chance. We're talking about the six stacks. We've got the Barret inspired minions as well. And the army of Voidlings are right there to say, that's a very easy transition between mid and bot to take two inhibitors and punish the fact that you are defending this space with only three members. So much so that uh, Max, they want to try and end the game right here and now. It's only 24 minutes into this one, but they've already taken down one of the next turrets. They're going to look for that second one right here and now, but the fight will break on out. As the hostile Tego comes out for the meantime, there is fighting the spare to try and keep the vision, but most importantly, keep the uptime. That second tower is gone, and same could be said for these members of Fury. Thomas Dino dead, their lifeline has been extinguished, and Lemus life leech with the Blade of the Rune King kiting like his life depends on it, and it most certainly does, as his health bar was blinking red. But it does not matter. Scooped into the fountain, they'll finally take down Kiste. His KDA will be ruined. But Schoenfire, for good measure, will pick up the triple, will keep them stuck in the fountain, and will tell them, we will humble you. Coming into this game, Ground Zero had a plan, and that was to snowball. And snowball they absolutely did. This bot lane in this jungle simply out-tempoed their opponents from start to finish and closed out a clean game one. Phenomenal showing from them. A few rough moments in the top lane there for Tien, but no doubt they'll be happy to have bounced back into a game two situation. Let's see what happens as we jump to a